as an associate professor, Marta Yebra. I work here at the Australian National University in the School of Engineering and also the Fenner School of Environment and Society. And I am also the director of uh, the NU Busfire Initiative. Uh, I did my PhD in Spain using remote sensing data, mainly from satellites to map fuel moisture content. So this is how, how wet the vegetation is. And this is very important for fire risk uh, prediction because the, the wetter the vegetation is, the less risk of a fire to occur. And also it's an important input for fire behavior model. When I moved to Australia in 2010 for a postdoc at CSIRO, I slightly changed a bit the topic. So I, I work also with remote sensing data from satellites, but for mapping uh, carbon and water cycles. And this was related to carbon uptake and water use by vegetation. And then after that, uh, three years postdoc, I started a, a position at the ANU in a project for the bushfire and natural hazard CRC that as, uh, was looking at uh, using remote sensing data not only from satellites, but also from other on-ground sensors to map fuel uh, properties. And in this specific project, we not only look at fuel moisture content, but also deriving information about the fuel structure and the fuel load that are also critical variables for bushfire risk and fire behavior. The more fuel a specific place has, the bushfire has more potential to be more intense and severe. Well, this is a bit of a hot uh, topic, but that's why there are prescribed burns happening to reduce the fuel loads of some places to, to try to, to prevent a fire to be very severe in the case of a fire occurring. And also the structure also influence. For example, if we have a, a single layer of fuel in the canopy and there is no understory, so it's, it's a simple fuel canopy layer. There is less probability of a canopy fire because there is no fuel to escalate a fire from the surface uh, to the canopy. This research we do help a uh, good farm management in, in many aspects. For example, it can help to inform farm managers on when and where they should do their prescribed burns or hazard re reduction burns. For example, in those areas that have higher fuel loads, and we show this in maps uh, using LiDAR data. And also, if, if at a given time the fuel is too dry, and we, we also have maps of, of the dryness of the fuel that we provide daily, they may wait uh, to do the prescribed burns at another time where the fuels are no with uh, critical fuel moisture content uh, values that uh, may produce very severe fire behavior and therefore may do the fire to, to go out of control. So with the satellite data you can know what's the fuel moisture content of, of the landscape because when you have solar energy hitting the surface, the vegetation when it has water inside uh, the leaves, they are short, a lot of that uh, radiation from the sun in a specific uh, range of the weatherlands and therefore there is less energy reflected back to the sensor that is in the satellite. And in the other way, if the vegetation is very dry, there is less absorption. So the energy that bounces back to the satellite is, is, is more. Mm -hmm. So because of these differences uh, in the way the, the vegetation reflects the solar energy, depending on the water content, you can map fuel moisture content using satellite data. The satellite data has improved a lot since I started my, my career and more specifically in terms of uh, data availability as well. Now we have uh, access to a lot of freely available satellite data uh, from different satellite missions. Most of them are overseas because in the satellite industry in Australia is quite young. We only recently had a, an Australian space agency starting in Australia like two or three years ago. These days uh, we have access to more detail and, and greater spatial resolution information. We are also promoting here and part of my work is also to design a mission for Australia that will collect uh, data for Australia that, that is more accurate than that that you can collect when overseas uh, satellite missions. So you have satellite data with diff different ground resolution. Some of the um, websites I have produced uh, to disseminate information on fuel moisture content at a continental scale for Australia uses satellite data from a sensor that is called MODIS that has 500 by 500 
pixel resolution. Yes, so 500 by 500 meters resolution is half a kilometer. So it's quite broad, but it gives you very good indication of a very broad scale land, land dryness conditions. So that's still useful. But then we have other satellite data that has a lot more detail. For example, Sentinel-2 data that comes from a European space mission has 20, 10 to 20 meters spatial resolution. So as you can imagine, that gives you a lot more detail. And this is very useful for land managers because instead of having very broad idea of the landscape dryness, now they can see differential between aspects of the topography. They can see uh, the differences of uh, moisture content conditions of the galleys in the valleys and a lot more detail than what uh, a 500 meter pixel resolution can give you. In my most recent research I have done, I led the development of the Australian Flammability Monitoring System. This is a system that provides access to pure moisture content maps, the daily scale uh, and 500 meters spatial resolution. And it also provides a flammability index. So, so this is an index from zero to one. Zero means that the fuel is not flammable. In simple words, uh, it means that if you threw a match, it will be very difficult to ignite. And one is the opposite. It's very highly flammable because it's very dry. And if you threw a match or if there is a source of ignition, that fuel will burn very easily. So if, if a specific area, given some weather conditions, have a flammability index of one, the fire authorities may want to raise their uh, awareness uh, levels and, and give more preparation, like a closure of parks. So it, it gives an extra layer of information on top of the fire danger rating system uh, to flag areas that may be of higher concern given the dryness of the landscape. So this is the, the map of pure moisture content for Australia as per today. And uh, the red areas are very dry areas, the, the blue are uh, wetter areas. You can zoom in to any region. We can zoom to Roomba, for example, and we can see a lot more detail on how things are going around this area. You can have you can click in any pixel of the image and you see the time series of fuel moisture content values, how fuel moisture content change over time and how it compares to, to other years. For example, this is as per today, but if we go to 2019, let's say December or, or November, earlier in the fire season, we can see the big difference on the moisture content condition. So all red, basically, um, we have pretty much the whole area had few most content values under 50% and below. Huge difference in terms of the dryness of the landscape in 2019 and now. The Australian Flammability Monitoring System also hosts uh, data from BOM on soil moisture content. And uh, soil moisture content is, is used broadly as a proxy of, of the dead fuel moisture content because it's, it's more related to, to that that the live fuel moisture content. So combining data from the satellite with the data from BOM on the soil moisture content conditions, the land managers have even a better detailed information of the fuel moisture content of the different layers in the forest. Yeah, with the satellite data, we are monitoring mainly fuel moisture content from the living vegetation. So this is the trees, the shrubs, and all, all kind of fuel that is standing and living. The modeling from the Bureau of Meteorology, they provide some predictions on the soil moisture content. The sensors I use for the fuel moisture content are optical based. But to get information about the soil, normally you use other kind of systems like SAR or, or microwave, so that have more potential to penetrate the, the canopy of the forest and get to the soil and get information on the soil. The Bureau of Meteorology are also doing some modeling uh, to predict uh, the soil moisture content instead of using satellite data. In the Australian Flammability Monitoring System, a fuel moisture content estimates are, are derived with a very complex algorithm. It's a physics-based algorithm, so basically what we do is we use some reality transfer models that are physical-based and simulate a different spectra of, of the vegetation for different fuel moisture content conditions. 
And then once you have a satellite image that provides observed spectra for a given day and location, we compare those uh, observations with all the simulations and find which simulation is more close to the reality, to the observation, and that uh, produce an estimate of few moisture content. So the system currently provides a near real-time estimates of the fuel condition, and the flammability index is forecast one week ahead because the flammability, this index from zero to one, uh, I explained before, is based on the fuel moisture content conditions of the week before. So it gives a bit of a forecast capability, but in terms of fuel moisture content, we are using satellite observations, so we don't have a capacity to forecast uh, yet. So using the flammability uh, index one week ahead can provide some, some useful information for fire managers to have some time to, to do some planning. But it, it is also very important to have a look at some information we provide in the system in terms of ranking the conditions, the current conditions with previous years. So we give some uh, statistics about uh, how a specific area is doing in terms of moisture condition in comparison with the a long time series of fuel moisture content conditions. And that again can give you an indication of how, how better or how worse uh, a given time is uh, given previous uh, fire seasons and, and fire history. So in terms of fuel management and reduction, yeah, there has been a huge change in, in the way it's seen and, and used across the country in the years I've been doing research. Previously, it was assumed that it was beneficial and in all conditions, but now there has been a lot of studies that are a bit more controversial and have demonstrated that fuel reduction is effective in X conditions and not always. And there are some specific uh, places that uh, shouldn't burn at all because if it is a very mature forest, sometimes they have a certain climatology and there they cannot be that in the more moisture conditions and therefore the, the forest is less flammable. Yeah, the issue of prescribed burning is, is controversial across the globe. It's, it's not something controversial only in Australia. There has been changes in perceptions around how to use it across the, the, the globe. For example, in the United States, they, they stopped uh, burning for a while and then there was a lot of fuel building up and that um, contributed to the higher risk conditions that California has been experiencing in the latest years. In Spain, they still do prescribed burns, but probably at a different rate as here. They don't have such a, a strict target of burning X percent of the land in, in, in a specific time period as uh, we do in Australia. There are many factors that are considered. Some studies that have demonstrated it's not as efficient as, as it's, it's meant to be. And, and there is a risk, there is a risk uh, of fire escaping and there is a risk to, to, the, to the public health uh, with the smoke that the prescribed burns produce. So uh, there are a lot of factors. It's not a, it's not a very simple uh, question that yeah, it, we burn and, and the risk is reduced. There are a lot of different factors to be considered. Uh, last year, I published a paper with some colleagues uh, from Australia and Europe on, on a call for Australia to have a new uh, agency. We came to this conclusion because in the middle of the black summer, it, it was very messy. Uh, there was no a clear database on, on how the fires were burning, uh, where they were burning, at what severity. Because of that, because that lack of clear and organized uh, database brought a very different message in terms of how much uh, forest was burning and how much emissions they were having and how much animals uh, were uh, dead because they were all based on pure uh, stipulation around the area that was burned because there was no a, a neat way to, to collect the data. And we have the be very good ways to collect that data. It's, it's just a question of having an agency that does it regularly for across Australia in a consistent way. And that, that includes also using satellite data. Some of the things that we show in that study is that the statistics of total area burned using satellite data was very different to those using the official sources from the land managers and emergency services. And this is because normally when a fire agency draws the polygon of a fire, 
it's just that uh, the outside of the fire, so via helicopter or from the ground. So it's a broad estimate of what the area was burned. But with the satellite, you can pick up patches of forest that may have not burned within that polygon for any different reason. And, and it's, it's a bit more accurate uh, than most fire agencies map uh, fires at the moment. During my career, what I have seen also that there is, there's a bit of a problem in terms of constant investment on bushfire management and science. So we have seen that when there is a catastrophic bushfire season, there is a huge injection of money uh, in research, and recovery and mitigation, but then things calm down and go back to normal. So I think it's very important to have a strong investment, especially in a country as Australia where bushfires uh, have been part of the landscape for very, very long. The landscape has been adapting to them, but with climate change, things are getting worse. Fire seasons are getting longer, more severe. Yeah, that we need a constant investment uh, to, to fight this new situation. A monitoring agency will, will fit that role. So I was very pleased to see that the Royal Commission had a strong recommendation on the use of technology for better, better mapping of fuel condition, and that's very, very close to my field of research. So I was very pleased to see that they pick up that. So we have technology that can help uh, greatly uh, to, to know where the fuel are. Uh, where the, how dry the fuel is, so it's, we need to to do better use of, of this data. I guess the most important thing now is to actually implement those uh, recommendations so we don't have the same issues that uh, we had in the past where there were strong recommendations that were not met. So one of the um, challenging aspects is that we have uh, a lot of population that lives in the wildland urban interface and therefore those populations are in higher risk. So those areas still need to have some strong management for uh, bushfire mitigation and it gets very challenging to make decisions. Again, we are having longer fire seasons. Uh, so the windows of opportunities for prescribed burning are getting shorter and shorter. So prescribed burning is getting more dangerous to be uh, done because of the dryness of the landscape and the weather that makes them uh, very difficult to, to carry on in, in very low severity as they should be. But still, they are effective in some specific areas. So if they are planned adequately and they can be done especially near to populations, they can still be efficient to reduce the, the risk to populations living in those areas. So it's getting very challenging. So that's perhaps why we also need to start thinking more creative on another ways to reduce uh, fire risk rather than just trusting and relying on, on prescribed burns that again are getting more and more difficult to plan. So um, it's great to see that the Turumba community is very interested in, in learning more about the technologies and how they can use information to improve the fire management, especially because uh, you are in, in areas that are a high risk uh, given the proximity with the forest and very scarf uh, territories. Thank you.